Sorry guys, it's been a while. Uh, a lot of you, a lot of you are asking about the uh, the thermal fix for the HP 630, and you guys wanted a more detailed view or detailed instruction thing. Even though most of you figured out how to do it, but some of you who are a little less uh, experienced need a bit more help. So uh, I googled this. It's called the uh, HP 630 end of product or Product end of life disassembly instructions, which this is about as good as it gets as a destruction manual. Um, so here are some of the steps. Uh, I'll go through it very briefly. You can read this on your own. I have the link posted below. So uh, first of all, take out the battery, unclip the battery, then remove these screws right here. These are all Phillips. Uh, it's a small Phillips screwdriver. You shouldn't need anything else other than a, a wedge. To actually pry it apart at the end but the uh, remove the screws that are highlighted or uh, circled you can read through all of this in the instruction manual uh, this removes the cd drive this removes the other cap cover you want to remove your uh, wi-fi and you want to disconnect this card if you have this um, it depends on your model but yeah just disconnect that disconnect the antenna and remove this screw and yeah just basically anything with the circles disconnect it uh, remove your hard drive right here. Uh, yeah, basically just go through all of this stuff. Uh, yeah, it shows right here. You have to open it. This is really a, just a very generic guide. This picture is obviously not the same laptop, but it just means open it for the next step after you remove these screws that are circled. Once you go through that. Now this is with the keyboard out, you want to take out these little bits of flat flex by flipping up these little flat covers. And yeah, that's where they are on the whole thing, or similar locations. Uh, you do not need to do this step, this is a non-important step. Uh, this is if you want to remove the trackpad, you don't need to in this case. Uh, this is just a very generic guide. Now, I don't have the actual laptop with me, so I can't exactly tell you, but uh, in order to remove the logic board, which you have to get at, because the, uh, the chip that is having the thermal problems is this one that I'm hovering over with my cursor. This is the south bridge for um, your chipset chip. So in order to remove the speakers, you actually have to unscrew it. I don't remember if you have to take out the LCD, but I think you do. But uh, before you do any of that, obviously disconnect these cables that are highlighted here. You should not have to disconnect this one. You do not have to remove your real-time clock battery. Uh, for, in this case, it's on board, but I think uh, it's actually a separate thing, a separate module for some of them. Uh, that, I don't remember what that is, but you shouldn't have to take it out. I, so here's how you disconnect the speakers. You want to take out this flat flex before you remove this speaker. You do not need to remove this USB uh, connector. Um, also, you do not need to remove the uh, little connections on the fan, which is up here. You do not need to remove that. Actually, I think this is for the speaker. The fan should be on the other side, so you shouldn't need to. Uh, sorry if this is kind of messy and all over the place, but I don't have the laptop with me. And uh, really, it's end of life. I mean, you can still use it, no problem, but with my sister's laptop and it's just it was more of a problem this was more of a test for me to see if i could fix it this you do not need to remove once you have all of these screws pulled out it should just lift out the board will lift out starting from this end and then you should be able to pull it or unslot it from the all the connectors and then putting it back in, you have to slot it in from this side first and then lay it down from that side. It's basically because all of these connectors get in the way. So uh, yeah. once you get it all removed, you do not need to remove this. Do not touch it at all. If you want to reapply new thermal paste and all that stuff, that's up to you. But that is not the cause of the thermal problem. You can ignore that. So the CPU, these are the hinges. And... We don't need you don't need to take apart the LCD screen. Uh, yeah, that's it in terms of teardown. Now, underneath this chip right here, this I think is similar. 
Um, they're all different. There's different revisions of the board. Okay, yeah, here. So here's uh, what my board looks like. This is your CPU. This is your graphics output for uh, Northbridge. This right here is your Southbridge. Uh, on the case itself, embedded on the case is a metal heatsink, which has a very like a very crappy thermal pad. It's probably all dried out and like it's too thin. What you need to do is apply a thick thermal pad onto this chip. You probably want to like maybe uh, glue it down with some uh, crazy glue just on the corners, just a very small amount of glue to keep the pad from falling out. Or if the pad is sticky enough, it should just stick on. Uh, you want to make sure the surface is clean. Use some isopropyl alcohol, also known as rubbing alcohol, and a Q-tip. That'll just clean that right off, just uh, to make sure there's no gunk on it. And then it will mate with the uh, the heatsink on the uh, on the case. The problem was that, like the actual thermal problem, was that this chip was heating up too much, and it wouldn't transfer that heat over. Like it wouldn't transfer it efficiently to the crappy passive heatsink that was built into the computer's chassis. So you have to remove um, the old thermal pad, buy a new thermal pad, like a thick one. Usually they come in a sheet. So like, what's going on? eBay, and we'll just go um, thermal pads. So yeah, you just, you don't need a hundred thermal pads. You don't even need this big sheet. But I mean, it's cheaper to buy it as this big sheet. It will take a while to ship since it's coming from Hong Kong, but um, obviously you can find this stuff on eBay, or not eBay, eBay, Amazon will ship it faster. Uh, you want a pretty thick one, uh, definitely bigger than 0.5 millimeter, so somewhere like one millimeter would actually be perfect. Uh, in terms of thickness for the pad. So you want some of that, cut it to size, um, enough to cover the chip plus maybe two or three millimeters outside the chip. Uh, and yeah, that should fix your thermal problem, reassemble it using the uh, instructions. And that should fix your problem, your thermal issues. Uh, to improve thermal problems, or not to improve thermal problems, to uh, to help with uh, the thermal airflow, on the case itself, uh, over the RAM slots, over everything, basically anywhere on the bottom of the HP 630, there are vent holes. Over those those vent holes, you can kind of see it here. There's some mesh. You can see just a bit. Fucking Chrome is, or this PDF is crap. Um, yeah, so right here you can see a little bit of mesh. When you pull off these covers, you can actually peel off the mesh and it will come off. So that'll help improve thermal flow and it will also remove any dust that was blocking any of the holes previously. Um, so yeah, once you really, the, the big problem was the thermal pad. If your laptop does not turn on at all, like you plug in the charger, the light turns on, but then like you try to actually turn it on and say all you hear is just your fan like going at full blast, that means your uh, your south bridge is actually so damaged that it desoldered itself from the board. Um, the way to fix that, well, it's not going to actually physically remove from the board. It's It's just like some of the pins are loose. So on this chip, you want to cover everything in, like, say, paper. Cover it all in paper except this chip and remove this battery. Don't actually disconnect it. Just, like, unstick it from the board. You can stick it back later. Cover it in paper, cover it, and then uh, put some tin foil around it, some aluminum foil. And then you want to go over this with a heat gun until it's uh, reflowed. Um, you should look up some other guides on how to reflow a motherboard. Um, usually with a hot air gun is good enough. If you want to be really adventurous, you can try sticking it in the oven, but that is uh, that's a little bit more dangerous. So you should probably just, if your laptop at all just does not boot up, or say maybe there's some USB ports or like headphone jacks that aren't working properly like they used to, it's most likely because of your uh, a desoldered BGA on your uh, Southbridge. So you want to reheat that. Um, but for most of you, you just have the thermal issue. 
which uh, force quits the entire OS, like it force shuts it down. So just fixing it with the thermal pad should be enough. Uh, this is not a guaranteed fix, but it definitely helps. Uh, the probability rate drops dramatically of a, of a thermal problem. But I, that's not to say that this permanently fixes it. The HP 630 is a disaster, but I mean, for those of you who've bought it and no longer have a, a warranty, obviously, since this thing is way out of service, uh, yeah, the thermal pad is probably as best as you're going to get. So you want to replace your thermal pad or make a better heat sink but yeah basically that guy that I showed you is how to take it apart and what chip question is the uh, the problematic chip thanks for watching if you still don't understand these instructions uh, comment and I'll try my best when I actually get home and have the laptop with me uh, yeah